So you fancy yourself to be a programmer, a coder, or a hacker? And sure, you've written a lot of code in JavaScript, C, or maybe even assembly language. Well, in this video, I'll introduce you to the excruciating exactitude of writing directly in machine language. In this world, you are not just the programmer, you are the compiler, assembler, linker, and loader. So stick with me on this journey into the not-so-distant past where computer was a job title, not just a machine, and programming a physical computer was an all-day exercise. Hello and welcome back to the UP5108 microcontroller series. Today I'll take you through the exacting process of writing Hello World directly in machine language. As of yet, we have no compiler or assembler for the UP5108 instruction set, so our only option is to edit the EEPROM bytes directly. So if you've ever had a reason to edit machine code directly like this, leave a comment down below for the whys and what fors. I'd love to hear the reasons why you had to resort to such a low-level process. Bringing up the UP5108 image in the sim yet again, we start out in the desktop view. And hitting Control k to start the timer, we see that Nothing at all is on screen. Opening up the case, we see that the instruction pointer is constantly increasing and very little else is going on. At this point, the EEPROM is all zeros. Row zero is the no operation instruction. Well, nothing happens other than the steady march of the instruction pointer through the entire EEPROM. So let's stop the clock here and reset the circuit to where it would be on power up. Looking at the user's guide, we see that the first eight bytes of EEPROM are reserved for the vector table. These values hold the locations in EEPROM that hold the code needed to handle a reset or any of the other system events. For this video, we will only need to deal with the reset vector. So setting it to 0800 means that the primary body of our code will start on this next line. Let's start with a single instruction that will show basic operation. Referring to the assembly grid, we see that the LAH instruction, EB, should put FF into the A register. Letting the processor run from here, we see that in fact FF is loaded into A, but the processor continues to run free, processing no ops. If we stop the clock, the instruction pointer is off in the weeds, and we have to manually set the EEPROM address back to 000, to get back to where our last, and only, instruction is. Of course, we could also reset the processor, but doing so clears the current state of the registers, which would otherwise be necessary for debugging. What we would rather do is to have the processor stop where and when we want it to so that we can check out the state of the registers and determine what's going on. Precisely for this purpose, I included the HALT instruction, which does exactly that by cutting off the clock signal from the rest of the processor. Now, when we reset and run, the processor halts immediately when it encounters the HALT instruction. Looking at the open case view, we see that the screen is connected to port 1 and the keyboard to port 0, which means put characters on the screen, we need to write values to port 1. When referring to ports, I use the read-write nomenclature versus load-store that is used for the registers. This helps distinguish them when creating the assembly mnemonics. The instructions for writing to port 1 are in this area. The W1E, or write to port 1 from EEPROM, writes the byte following the instruction to port 1. We can use this instruction to write hello world one character at a time in straight-line code, so long as we look up the code for each character in an ASCII table. Now we cap it off with a HALT instruction, then switch to the open case view, hit reset, and run. Oh no! We printed hello world. No matter, we can fix that. Let's see. H-E-L-L-O. Replace the second O with the code for a space, which I remember is 2-0. And here at the end, we need to add space for the missing R and the exclamation mark. Also, code 21, that I happen to remember. Which means we have to carefully move every byte after the missing R in world over to the right. Back to the open case view for another quick test. Reset and run. At this point, we've succeeded in printing hello world. And it didn't take all that long, but like most software, the devil comes out when the changes go in. 
right now we can only write hello world once and only at the beginning of the program. Suppose we wanted to fill the screen with hello worlds. To do that, we can either duplicate this code over and over in ROM, which is pretty wasteful, or we can jump back to the start with a jump short instruction code. A short jump only changes the low byte of the instruction pointer, so we are limited to locations within the same 256 byte section. A long jump, by comparison, would also work and could go anywhere in the EEPROM. But not only does it take an additional byte for the destination address, but doing a long jump takes more time to execute. Let's go back to the desktop view. Reset and run and watch as the screen fills with hello worlds. Now we don't have to go back to the beginning. Perhaps after the first hello world, we want to just print world over and over. We can change the destination of the jump to 1-3. Reset and run once again and we're, what? We're still getting the whole hello world string. Okay, let's look at the circuit view again and see what's going on. Notice how the instruction pointer is periodically going back to zero. We'll use control K and single step through this code to see what's happening. Well, there's your problem. We jump to a location that was the space character and it is being loaded as if it were an instruction. While processing the instruction, the program gets restarted. Looking at the code grid, we find that 2.0 is the PDS instruction, which I haven't actually implemented yet, so the program just restarts. Another quick fix by changing the jump destination to 1.2, reset and run once again, and there you have it. Hello world, 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 world. Let me just set the mood for you with some memorable background sounds. Well, that's pretty much all I had planned for this one. Join us next time as we get into a little bit more complex coding. And don't forget to like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. Share this video with your friends. Please consider supporting us on Patreon so that we can continue to bring you these series.